Welcome back to the Ultimate Metal Shootout series here at the Hot Pole Studios. We've already compared all the speakers in separate videos. So now we're comparing 15 different microphones in front of a Celestian Atom Vintage 30 inside the Zilla Fat Baby 1x12 with the Blackstar 104 6L6 head uh, with the Dead 13's Demons still as the track that we're using and apologies if you're getting a little bored of the track by now I mean we're playing the same sections over and over however that does mean that it's consistent that means that no matter what you're hearing between um, between different mics or different speakers there's no possibility of it being a different track that's putting you off and giving you a different perspective so we're trying to keep it as scientific as we can so the first microphone that we're going to use is the one that everybody knows and most people love and that's the Shaw SM57. So the next mic is another Shure SM57, but this one is one that I've modified. This is what they call a tape-op mod. Now this is a relatively simple thing. All you do is you take out the transformer because um, rumor has it that the transformer is quite a cheap kind of uh, import model and doesn't do the sound any favors. That's at least what I was led to believe when I was modifying this microphone. So this is the Shure SM57 with the tape-op mod. we 
Following on from the 57s, this is kind of the battle of the dynamics here. So this is another kind of favourite mic of mine that I use quite often in conjunction with a second mic because it's quite bright and punchy. This is the Audix i5. I very often use this on snares because it's got that kind of punchy crack kind of thing. But on a guitar cab, here's how it sounds. Next up is another Shaw mic, but this is the Shaw SM7, specifically the Shaw SM7B. This is the big fat thing that you see guys like uh, James Hetfield singing vocals into. But guys like Dave Grohl quite often use this on a guitar cab, and I always wondered why. But now here's, here's what we've done with it.
I should probably mention at this point that every microphone, because you can see sometimes in using the same video twice, what we've done is we've used the speaker cone and we've used the mics in exactly the same place, which is half an inch away from the grill and about an inch away from the center of the cap. So from the middle of the cap, the exact center, you can see me using a torch here. We've gone exactly the same distance outwards so that the two mics being recorded at the same time are in exactly the same place on the speaker, which means that flicking between them is going to be exactly the same if they were the same microphone. The only exceptions are uh, the only exceptions are if the microphone doesn't allow you to get that close, like the SM7B where it's got the really long kind of cage on it. So what we've done in that case is we've touched the cage up to the grill so that the capsule of the mic is as close as it can reasonably get. Next up is the Shure SM58, which some people will tell you is exactly the same as the 57, and some people will tell you it's different. So I wanted to actually do a kind of a scientific test to see if there is any uh, proof either way. Now, from what I can hear, there's a very subtle difference, and I think the microphone's construction inside is exactly the same, but the head basket grill seems to give a very, very subtle difference. I'm not sure if it's better or worse, but it sounds like this. This mic is one that a lot of guitar engineers will know. This is a Sennheiser MD421. I think it's a 421N because this is a vintage model. This is one that's been around for a long time. This is, I think this was made in the 70s. Although it's either been uh, changed in, on the back to have an XLR or it was one of the very first XLR models. And the vintage ones apparently sound different from the new ones, but I couldn't find uh, a new one to compare with. But the 421 on its own is quite a warm but gritty mic and it sounds like this.
Next up we have the SE Electronics Voodoo VR1 ribbon which you can see right here. Now ribbon mics, especially on guitar cabs, are traditionally not used because they're really quite delicate and can be destroyed in front of a guitar cab. However, the SE mics, especially the Voodoos, are designed to really take a lot of uh, SPL, a lot of noise handling and be absolutely fine. So I was quite confident to put this in front of a guitar cab. On its own, you will notice that it's really quite bassy, but what we've done to keep this test fair is we've not put any kind of high pass filter or cut on any of these mics, so it will be quite bassy. And usually I would use this mic in combination with something else like the SM57 that you see next to it. And, but, what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you what each separate mic sounds like right up close to the cab on its own. So without further ado, the Voodoo VR1 ribbon. Next up is the older SE Electronics ribbon, the R1. As far as I know, this was their first ribbon design and this was the first ribbon of theirs that I bought. This has got a warmer, rounder tone and doesn't do that kind of high frequency thing at all, really. It's all mids and low end. So what I would do in a mix is I would take out the low end because what I want the ribbon sound for, usually, is a thick, rich mid range. And I'd mix that with a 57 or something very similar. And on its own, just to be warned, it will sound quite low and thick and bassy, but on its own it sounds like this.
Up next is the SE Electronics SE5. Now, a lot of people don't think about using a small diaphragm condenser on a guitar cab. It seems like quite an odd choice, but in a mix, it can really make the difference. Because if you think about it, small diaphragm condensers meant to give you quite an honest kind of sound. And that means that the high frequency can really kind of be extended and low frequencies can be quite honest as well, which mixed in, I find with another mic. This is something that I picked up from Nolly from Periphery. If you add in uh, a small diaphragm condenser as long, along with your other mics, you can give it a kind of a bitier sound without getting nasty. And it's really quite a clever trick. So on its own, here is the SE Electronics SE5. Having heard the SE5, up next is one of the very first microphones I ever bought. I think it might be the second or third mic I ever bought while I was still at university, more than a decade ago. Uh, this is one of their original mics. The SE1A is one of the first small diaphragm condensers that was kind of affordable, and that was the reason that I got it. But it turns out that if you use this in that kind of 
dynamic mic plus small diaphragm condenser kind of roll, it's really got quite a meaty tone to it. So this is the Messi 1A. Up next, and just to round out the SE Electronics portion of this video, um, this is the Gemini 2. So this is my main vocal mic, and this is a tube mic. It's got two tubes, a 12AX7 and a 12AT7 inside the mic body, which makes it huge. It's quite physically large, which is why I've only got one mic on the cab um, in this particular comparison. It makes it quite difficult to get other microphones where you'd want them to be, which can be a potential downside on a guitar cab. Especially if you're micing up a single speaker. If you're micing up two speakers, you could put the Gemini on the second speaker and that could work perfectly well. But in this case, this is what happened and it's got a big kind of mid-rangey, kind of saturated tone and that's the, the tubes inside the microphone adding to the tone and sounds like this. we 
Next up is the Battle of the Eggs, as I like to call it. Um, this is two unusual microphones that you might not necessarily think about on a guitar cab, but I had them lying around and I thought, hey, why not? Let's give it a try. So the first one up is Blue Microphone's Blue Ball. If you've ever seen a Snowball or a Yeti that, they, that Blue mics do that a lot of guys use for webcams, um, that kind of uh, live streaming audio, this was one of their original designs and I found this mic at, at university and I was like, oh, this is different. Uh, this is a dynamic mic, but it's got a kind of a, a class A preamp inside it, which is phantom powered, which is really quite weird, but it means that you can have like a hundred meter cable running off of it and it will sound exactly the same at the end as it did at the start, which is really good for live applications. I know that Queens of the Stone Age used a lot of these for a while. And uh, for whatever reason, Blue stopped making them, but you can still find them on eBay. So this is a Blue Ball. Next up is an AKG D112. Now you'll probably have seen this on a kick drum somewhere or a bass cab because usually that's where they're used. They were originally used because they could handle a lot of uh, a lot of bass and a lot of uh, noise where a lot of mics couldn't really handle the kick drum or the bass cab noise. And also their EQ curve has a big bass hump, kind of a mid scoop and then kind of comes back again in the uh, upper mid to the bit of a presence peak, which for a kick drum is fantastic because it means there's less work on the desk because it's more like you would want a kick drum to sound in rock and metal straight off the bat. Uh, on a guitar cab on its own, it also has that kind of mid scoopy thing, which on its own doesn't really work, which is why a lot of people I think kind of look at it and go, oh, that's for bass. But when we come to the dual mic thing, you'll see it can work in context, but this is how it sounds on its own on a guitar cab, an AKG D112.
Next up is one that I usually use in the control room, it's a talkback mic. This is a Sennheiser E825, it's one of the Evolution series. So it's usually used as a handheld vocal mic. But I figured I'd give it a go because Sennheiser's mics have really been known, as far as I know, to have quite a kind of crisp, clean kind of sound to them rather than a warm sound. And I figured, eh, let's give that a try. Just to see if kind of getting some crispness might work for rock and metal rather than the warmth that we get off most dynamics. So here's a Sennheiser E825. And I've saved the best for last. Maybe. And um, maybe not. This is what I thought I would try. Um, right now I'm recording the voice audio for this off a shotgun mic. This is a Sennheiser MKH416, which for a long time was kind of industry standard as a shotgun mic. And I figured, why don't people use shotgun mics on uh, guitar cabs? And I think I've found out why. Um, this is how it sounds. I had to put it fairly close to the grill because the end of a shotgun mic's barrel um, is the bit that cancels out the side audio and the capsule's actually half a foot back, which means that, in theory at least, you uh, shouldn't get as much low end into the tone and that kind of thing. Uh, so just so you know, the gain on the preamp for this was on zero and it was not clipping, but it Despite the fact that the preamp wasn't clipping, it sounded like this.
Sorry about that. <laughs> it sounds quite kind of Ramstein-ish, and I figure either the microphone's clipping internally, or what could possibly be happening is that usually even quite directional microphones, when you point them at a guitar speaker, they'll kind of capture maybe half the speaker overall. Whereas a shotgun mic is so focused, it might only be catching kind of a, a tiny little bit of the, the speaker cone, which means that it sounds a lot more like maybe just the direct out from the back of an amp because the kind of moving of the voice coil and all that kind of stuff isn't being picked up because it's far too specific. Thought I'd give it a try and unfortunately, that's how it sounds. Hope you found this useful. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to stick around, uh, we're next going to do a microphone comparison between an SM57 plus a second mic. So all the mics you've heard in this video and are going to be dual mic'd with a 57 just to see what happens when you blend the two together because you may find that some of the mics you've heard today that sounded absolutely disgusting um, or that you thought sounded great in combination may not work as you expected. So stick around for that. And also if you've not seen the speaker comparison series, we've done this setup, but changing out the Vintage 30 speaker for a Creamback H, an M, a Neo, um, a 16 and 8 ohm Vintage 30, a Lynchback K100, and an Eddie Van Halen speaker. So we've really gone for it. Um, we also do mixing and mastering as well as guitar reamping at our studio. So if you want to give us a, a shout, then we can always talk about working together. I'd be uh, happy to talk to you guys. And I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button as well for more of these videos because more will be coming, I promise you. Um, check them out and I'll see you soon.